Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. I had a bunch of electrolytic capacitors lying around and thinking about what to do with them, I decided to make a test of a homemade system for spot soldering. So I built this little system and in this video I will explain the basics of spot soldering and make the test of our little system. Spot soldering works in the following way. Imagine that we have two pieces of metal that we want to solder. We apply pressure and a large current through both of the metal pieces. We have two electrodes. Then the current will flow from one electrode to the other. And if the current is high enough, the metal will melt and we will have our solder joint. We can also put both electrodes in the upper piece of metal and the current will also flow from one to the other and we will have our solder joint but this is a more optimum arrangement. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. In order to obtain the large current necessary for spot soldering, normally you use a special transformer with a secondary of low voltage and very high current. But you can also use capacitors. A capacitor, since it has very low internal resistance, it can produce very large currents when they are shorted. And this is the method that I will use. I made this capacitor bank, 20 capacitors, all of them in parallel. Each capacitor is rated at 4700 microfarads at 25 volts. So the 20 capacitors in parallel will give a total capacitance of 94,000 microfarads. I added these two metal tips to the capacitor bank in order to use it for spot soldering. And I will charge it with the power supply. Since the capacitors are rated at 25 volts, that is the maximum voltage that we can apply to the bank. So let's use, for example, um, 20 volts. Let me connect the power supply to the bank and turn it on. It charges very quickly, less than one second. And now we can use the bank to try to solder something. I can touch the terminals of the capacitor bank since the voltage is very small, only 20 volts and the resistance of the human skin is large. So the current that is circulating through my body when I touch the terminals is very low. Let's measure the current using the multimeter. At 20 volts, I'm going to connect the positive of the power supply to the positive terminal of the multimeter and complete the circuit with my hands. In the milliamp scale, we measure 0.02 milliamps. Let's move it to microamps and the current is 37 microamps. Very, very small. You cannot feel anything. However, the capacitor band does contain a lot of energy. Let me demonstrate with this piece of aluminum paper. You can see how 
the aluminum paper is vaporized by the energy in the capacitor bank. The total energy of the capacitor bank can be calculated with this formula, one half of the capacitance times voltage squared. In our case, we have a capacitance of 94,000 microfarads, which is 0.094 farads, and the maximum voltage that our capacitor bank can resist is 25 volts. This will give a total energy of 29.4 joules. In order to give you an idea of this energy level, cardiac defibrillators use energy levels on the order of 200 joules. Ok, let's try to solder a terminal to this battery. I don't have the special battery tabs, but I found this metal strip and in fact you can see that it was spot soldered, therefore I think it may work. Okay, it seems to be soldered, but let's apply more force to see if it resists. Well, as you can see, if you pull it hard, the solder joint will not resist. Uh, I tried to use a larger voltage. This test was at 16 volts. I used uh, 24 volts, which is almost the maximum capacity of the capacitor bank. And what happens is that the strip is perforated. In fact, in this case, at 16 volts, we can see that there is a hole in the tail. Spot soldering is more complicated than it seems. There are several variables at play. The intensity of the current, voltage, and the time during which the current is applied, and also the pressure of the tips on the solder joint. Maybe we need some more time of uh, applying the current, in that case, a larger capacitor bank is needed, more capacity. But uh, that is the test of trying to solder with a capacitor bank. I hope you find this video interesting. Thanks for your visit and see you in the next one.